I'm Jessica Russo Scher, and I'm the TUK coordinator at Frankfurt International School. We started the conversation about the promise and pitfalls of artificial intelligence in education with teachers, students, and administrators, and soon grew to include people who are technology experts, experts in education, and people who are experts in TOK. So I hope you enjoy this little video to capture some of the perspectives as we enter into this discussion about the promise and pitfalls of AI in education. Arguably, it will inhibit creativity and arguably it will in encourage cheating. But throughout history, there have been different inventions that have increased or decreased certain values like if you go back to the printing press, that changed how we uh, how, how we communicated with, with one another. I think that through this use of AI, it might destroy the creativity and um, further the dependence on technology that students have, making them maybe less creative and, I don't know, making it easier for them to coast. Um, I think that AI doesn't have um, a sense of what is right or wrong. So if you ask it to do something that would generally be considered ethically Im immoral, it would still perform the task. And a few pros that come to mind are the pro the personalization of learning. AI can provide students with uh, customized learning experiences tailored to their individual needs and abilities, improved efficiency, certainly from the students, and we have to watch that, how that efficiency is used, but automating tasks and providing real-time feedback to students was another pro, and increased engagement. AI-powered games, simulations can make learning more interactive and engaging for students. Now, that's just three pros, and how about a few cons? A few cons, the lack of human interaction. AI learning can lack the personal touch and human interaction. Coming out of COVID, we certainly learned how important the interaction with the teacher and the students was in learning and development. Uh, second one would be bias and lack of diversity. These AI systems can perpetuate and amplify bias based on the data they are trained on. So we have to be cautioned and aware of that. And privacy concerns. The use of AI in education raises concerns about the collection of data, storage, and use of student data. So those are just three pros and three cons in an informal way. I'd invite you to consider, of the three pros and of the three cons that I put out there, which one of those was mine? Which one of those was artificially intelligence chat GPT? generated, and which one of those was an augmented engineered prompt that was a hybrid of both mine and uh, artificial intelligence. So one pro is he of using like artificial intelligence in the classroom is being able to get feedback from your essays um, instead of like relying on teachers. However, one con I see is it does make it easier to cheat, so you're likely to see more like uh, restrictions when it comes to end of year exams. Um, like many teachers before these developments came out, we're talking about how there is probably going to be a move towards like, you know, completing exams on the laptops. But now it's probably going to be everything is done by hand just to ensure there's no cheating. Well, the teacher should be altering their teaching style and the way they teach the class in a way that uh, students can't use ChatGPT. And I feel that in that way, it also makes the class more interesting and more engaging to the students. Um, I definitely think AI is interesting in concept and in theory, but when it comes to points of replacing creatives like writing and art, it becomes very scary, I think. First of all, let's talk about AI very shortly, because as you know, it's a, it's a buzzword. It's a catch all for so many things. So when we think of AI, what are we talking about? Are we talking about machine learning? Are we talking about natural language processing? Are we talking about robotics or even machine learning used in robotics? It's a wide area. When we come to chat uh, GPT, I mean, it's interesting because it, there's a machine learning element to it, right? You're training a system based on text. And it's one of the flaws that I see with ChatGPT is absolutely uh, this system has been trained on text, which is already outdated. And then there are always biases in training data. So it really depends on what data went into it. And it, with ChatGPT, it's, as you know, a lot of textual data. So you can't actually get any other modes out of it, like graphs, statistics, and so forth. So it's very limited. And how about, for example, training data in English uh, mostly? How about other languages? So I think the inaccuracies will go up considerably when you ask Chinese, Japanese, Turkish, French, or whatever questions because the data has not been trained on it. 
And uh, references plagiarism is another thing. So the data is trained on a lot of textual data, but it doesn't really provide you links or references. And what if you as a human start believing in what the system is providing to you because you think it's superior, although it's not. So it actually can have an influence on your perception too. Uh, with all advances in artificial intelligence, specifically narrow artificial intelligence, because as you know, when we talk about general artificial intelligence, we talk about this human-like intelligence, which is not there. But when we talk about narrow artificial intelligence and uh, systems like ChatGPT, and we know, for example, that it's pretty much based on machine learning, um, we should also be aware of all the uh, the shortcomings and uh, it's in the system. Anyway, it's nice to have, as I said earlier, but it's not a must have. And I don't really see a problem for education because as you know, when you do uh, inquiry, you do research, one of the main things is not just learning, but putting things together and referencing. Uh, the system can't really reference at this stage. You don't know where the information comes from. So you need to be highly critical and as you know, there's a whole history of information that was served to people on social media. We've talked about it. That was the last wave by chatbots, etc., which might be fake, which might be inaccurate. And how do we know that those biases don't enter into a system like this, right? And then are reflected in people's daily usage. My concern is on the ethical implications from a TOK perspective. AI trained on data from a certain, um, you know, it has to get its information from somewhere. And if it's trained on data from a certain gender, language, socioeconomic group, and so forth, this may lead to the exclusion of certain perspectives, limiting the voices of marginalized communities. In education, this bias can limit the student's understanding of the world around them and their place within that world. These... Um, Bubbles of information may limit our acquisition of knowledge, uh, and it can result in our a more limited and narrow understanding of the world, which obviously can lead to a lack of empathy, compassion, and critical thinking skills. As technology um, changes and there's disruptive innovations in our society, sometimes our biggest institutions have trouble following at the pace that it changes in real life, and um, that's the case in schools. So I'm a big proponent of um, don't just build a fence around the pool, teach people how to swim. So embracing it and figuring out how it's used in daily life and how it can be used to actually enhance learning uh, would be my recommended approach. Not easy because it questions some of the systems and processes that we already have built and have been using for a long period of time, but that's the job of disruptive innovation. The perils and pitfalls and opportunities of AI in uh, from a TOK perspective. Well, I suppose there are two points. First of all, this is well-trodden ground in science fiction, in literature, films, and so on. At what point do we start treating artificial beings as having value as sentient beings? It's quite clear to me that our basic premise that anything which is not carbon-based life forms isn't really alive is going to come into uh, further and further question as things become more and more sophisticated in AI. And once we make a decision about that one way or another, it will have incredible implications for how we have to treat the things that we manufacture, uh, whether or not there are any ethical considerations that we need to bear in mind. That's a massive, massive question. And there's a huge literature in the philosophical um, journals and so on about that. The second question from a TOK perspective, I think, actually, is almost the flip side of that, which is we need not to get too hung up on some questions. For example, I don't think AI poses any new challenges to the framework of ethics itself, although it raises ethical questions. And I think sometimes we need to make sure in TOK that what we're talking about actually bites in the real world. The questions of technology and AI are profound for sure. But to some extent, I think we can get bogged down in language sometimes. It's a bit like asking, can a submarine swim? Well, if it can get you from one side of the ocean to the other one safely enough, it doesn't really matter whether we call it swimming or not. Similarly, 
whether we say, can a machine think? Well, it may not think like a human, but at some point we have to not worry too much about the words and actually look at what the machines can do and make our judgments based on those. Hi, my name is Adrian Kleitz, and I'm the International Affairs Director at Enco Justice and a student at the International School of Tanganyika. At Enco Justice, we're a coalition of youth activists fighting for human rights with the intersection of AI. We've been working with various organizations from Amnesty International to the American Civil Liberties Union and lobbying state and local lawmakers from around the world um, on education and AI policy. Recently, we've been working to, the, to address the invasive use of facial recognition in schools uh, and to integrate lessons about racial bias and AI on school curriculums. Our international chapters generally focus on the intersection of AI and democracy and AI and warfare. Um, but the technology that's generating quite a bit of buzz today in the education world is ChatGPT. Um, and a couple school districts have even decided to ban it. Uh, we don't feel this is advisable for many reasons. First of all, schools are meant to prepare students for the world they're about to enter into. Uh, and beyond that, it's important that schools uh, that students learn how to use all the technologies at their disposal uh, in order to be prepared for when they enter the real world. Uh, these perpetual changes to education are nothing new either. If you look at the last three generations, for example, we've gone from teaching shorthand and cursive to completing standardized tests on iPads. When Google first emerged, there was talk of banning it too. Now it's one of the most useful educational tools we have. As technology advances exponentially, changes to the classroom also occur, and learning to evolve with it is key to advancing in a progressive society. Thank you for your time and attention, and please feel free to reach out if you have any interest in getting involved at Encode Justice. The use of artificial intelligence has never been as prevalent as before in the lives of the average student. As a freshman in college, I am tempted every day to use artificial intelligence services such as ChatGPT to craft up my essays. And on one hand, while they might be a good resource for you to start your essay or to inspire you, you also risk the idea of plagiarizing or just straight up not doing work through the use of artificial intelligence. I'm aware that AI is a very broad and complex domain and comprises of many individual technologies. However, I wanted to focus my response on the infamous ChatGPT and other similar platforms that are servicing this discussion regarding AI and its promises and pitfalls. As a student, the past couple of weeks have been a, a roller coaster ride regarding the application of this AI based research engine. There's a clear divide between the rifts this engine will establish in the world of students and the world of teachers. The student now has access to human-like creativity at hand in any class, at any moment, just through the simple click of a button. The teacher, however, faces a different reality, a reality where trust and rationality collide. And this sort of summarizes the disruption the world of education faces, these trust issues between teacher and students. When used as a cheating tool, I think the main pitfall of AI-driven engines is sort of the laziness it instills, an idleness that leads to an inner de deterioration in motivation to complete a task at hand, as one now has the satisfaction of having ChatGPT to do the work for you. What I mean by this is that this platform sort of relieves the stress in all the wrong ways. It puts a halt to hard work and the effort of the students and amplifies procrastination, avoidance of deadlines, and more. In specific, it puts a dent into the brainstorming and planning process of all sort of work, as students are rather inclined to spend two minutes on a chat GPT search instead of devoting longer periods of genuine creative research. In our labs, we are interested in how students can develop an understanding of artificial intelligences that is both scientific and practical. To do this, we believe students need more opportunities to think deeply about the similarities and differences between humans, non-human animals, and AIs. Specifically, we believe the concepts of learning and evolution may be important concepts for students to focus on. For example, students need time to reflect on big questions such as, how is learning similar and different in humans and AIs? Or 
is it scientifically justifiable to say that AIs are evolving? Scientists in our Max Planck Institute and across the Max Planck Society are actively driving the future of AIs and how human beings can or should interact with these intelligent agents. Now we think it is also time for students around the world to have the opportunity to become drivers of these discussions. And so it is very exciting to see this student-led symposium on such a pressing topic. So I think AI can be good because it's it's definitely like an easy, more convenient way of accessing knowledge. Look, increase like unemployment. AI brings a convenience to attaining knowledge. And so what I think we should do is, as the popul- populace is taking in in good faith and learn how to live with it.